Yo, 95% Rookie here. Uh, gonna be starting a new tutorial here real quick. Um, well, might, might actually be a pretty long video, but I'm gonna try to edit it down and at least keep it into bite-sized chunks, kind of like what I did for the Alive tutorial. Um, essentially, I'm kind of doing an, think of it as a Drongo's, Drongo's mods, as, as the title says, Drongo's mods uh, tutorial generally, but it's kind of also just like my current, um, mod and mission uh setup so essentially um you know i made the alive tutorial and that was kind of how i make my uh missions but this is going to be like kind of how i do it now after a few months i've changed some things i have some new systems in place so it'll be kind of a an addendum to that um but general i'll just kind of go over mods i'm using um then i'm going to make a somewhat simple multiplayer operation although Everything here should be fully applicable for single player as well. It's the, the beauty of the, these mods that Drongo's made, um, which there are, there are similar mods um, on the workshop as well. But Drongo's, I find, is the best. I, I even actually prefer it to Alive now, personally, although, you know, they do things very differently. Alive still has its place, but for my purposes, I find Drongo's to be the best. Um, so, but anyways, um, yeah, basically you could you can make dynamic operations where um, as the ma as the mission maker, you have, even though you know a general picture, um, there's going to be a lot that you don't know. So you can react, um, you know, uh, properly rather than, you know, knowing exactly where all the enemies placements are and everything. It's, it's a very a dynamic system, essentially. Uh, and so, you know, that's applicable for playing in single player and also in multiplayer with friends. So um, I'm going to be making this in the same way I would for my my current group of, you know, like six to 12 people. But, you know all of this should be scalable like upwards and downwards for player count, including single player, as long as you may have to take a couple of things into consideration. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'll we'll go over mods first. So basically all of Drongo's mods, except for, I think the only one I'm missing here is command the AI command, just cause I don't really know how that works. I haven't really tried it. I'm sure that's good for um, commanding AI. I don't really play custom single player content very much, but you know, if you do that, you know, that's a good one as well. Uh, but generally, so Drongo's AI fire support, which basically uh, it enables when you place on the module, it enables AI to use fire support, including CAS. Um, but uh, keep in mind that, like, I also use actually, I don't actually have the mod here. Lamb. Uh, yeah, Lamb. I use Lamb's Danger .fsm, which uh, is an AI mod that you can enable to have. I think it has a better um, AI use of artillery, at least in my opinion, like you could use either Drongo's AI fire support for artillery or lambs. If you're using lambs, that isn't lambs is in my opinion, the best AI, AI mod there is right now. Um, there's, there's a couple other mods you could use, but yeah, anyways, uh, so AI fire support, I generally just use this for the air support, but you know, you can use it for artillery as well. Uh, lambs danger, obviously that's the AI mod that's highly configurable, lots of, um, settings and stuff. Zeus Enhanced, that's just for Zeus, which, you know, even if you're not Zeusing when you're testing missions and stuff, the Zeus Enhanced tools are really good to use. Uh, Ace, I generally play with Ace. Uh, most of the stuff, you know, if you really don't like Ace, you can probably figure out a way to do it without Ace, but um, I generally recommend Ace, even in, maybe, maybe in single player, it's not so good, but um, I don't, I, I find it really enhances gameplay a lot with the medical system and everything. Not to mention all the other stuff you can do with it. Uh, Drongo's air operations. So this allows for AI to use aircraft a lot better. And in conjunction with the AI fire support and stuff like that, you can also have um, friendly aircraft you can call in support with. And the, the UI and all that is really good. Drongo's artillery, similar to air operations, but more focused on artillery. It's also configurable with modules and stuff like air operations, is, uh, which allows you to call in AI artillery in a very dynamic uh, and advanced way compared to vanilla armor three, uh, Drongo's defensive AI. I don't actually use this very much. Um, I don't actually know how it functions all that much. Like I've, I've experimented with it. And in my opinion, I usually just use Drongo's map population, but I'll keep it in this mod list just because, um, you know, if you want to use the defensive AI, it's, I think it's more suitable for like a static defense type mission where you're, you're assaulting positions and it'll set up dynamic bunkers and stuff. But in my opinion, I, I usually prefer defensive AI to be garrisoned in buildings and um, 
patrolling around versus like just having bunkers everywhere, which kind of seems what defensive AI is set up for. Um, uh, and by the way, I'll have uh, in the description, I'll have uh, like the mod pack for this. So like the uh, file, which you can import as well as um, I'll have a uh, download for the actual example mission and any other script stuff that I'm using um, that'll all be included in the description or should be. If it's, if it's not, then you leave a comment and I should see it and, Fix it if like the link goes down or something. Uh, Drongo's dynamic weather. This is a really good mod just for simple dynamic weather. So it's like you know not not super predictable weather. And Drongo's map pop map population. This is the the it's a huge huge mod. Uh, not in size obviously. It's only five megabytes. But in terms of what you can do with it, it's an incredible mod. Uh, I've only experimented or found it in the past like couple months, but um I've been using it a ton and it's it's a really good uh. The all-encompassing mission generation mod, basically. Uh, Drongo Spooks and Anomalies. This is just for the fun stuff. You want to have uh, monsters and anomalies and stuff. It's kind of a just a fun mod. Uh, Threaten Enhance. That's for uh, pretty much a requirement for me in terms of it adds a lot of functionality to the Threaten editor um, or the Eden editor, I guess you would call it. Um, you know, for the the mission making, it just makes it more dynamic. Death and Hit Reactions. This is kind of a must-have mod for me at this point. Basically makes it so where you can you can disable it for the player, but for AI at least, um, when you shoot them, they'll react in a dynamic way, and when they die, they'll play a death animation and won't just do the goofy ass rag doll that Armor Three has. So that's kind of a must have an uh, immersion mod for me that I use all the time now. Enhanced movement. Uh, you should generally know this mod, but it basically makes movement around the map a lot better in terms of you can vault over uh, or you can climb up objects, climb down from objects. You can do a lot more stuff with movement. Ghost Recon third person camera. I use this pretty much all the time as far as it makes third person a little less OP. You can peek around corners a lot less than you could before. Uh, it just makes it a little more immersive and a little less cheesy using third person, which I do a lot. You know, obviously, if you don't use third person, you don't need to worry about that. Um, Lambs RPG, which is a, a, an expansion to Lambs, which enables AI to use RPGs a lot more and in an anti-infantry and anti-helicopter role a lot more. So they'll be firing RPGs a lot more, which just makes it more, you know, those epic battles. Uh, you can get variants of this for RHS and Cup if you're using those for different factions. Uh, Lamb Suppression, which I think this just allows you to suppress AI a lot more. Not entirely sure. I've, I don't know exactly what this says, but I always install it. Lamb's Turrets, I think this is adjust how they fire on turrets and stuff. I think I, I'm pretty sure that's what it does. These are just, I just saw all the lamp stuff just cause you know, why not? Um, lamps is a pretty good AI mod. SSD death screams. This is a little bit of a more cheesy mod. Like, uh, it can be a little wacky sometimes, but it, it I think it adds a decent amount in terms of immersion and, um, just fun in terms of firefights. Cause when you shoot an enemy, they'll make, uh, or if you get shot, um, you'll make like a little scream. Like if you get hit or if you die, you'll make like dying sounds, um, not all the time, but it, it does make um, for some more dynamic firefights. Suppress, uh, I use this a lot now. This It basically enables squad style or like project reality style suppression mechanics on players. So when, when bullets ne hit near you a lot, your screen kind of goes blurry and it's configurable in CVA settings, but basically makes it hard to, uh, to return fire. So, you know, it kind of imparts that, that fear of death that you can't really get or rather... Uh, uncomfortableness from enemy fire that you can't really get just playing a video game. Um, if you don't like it, yeah, you can obviously disable it. And then just enhance H3 compatibility, self-explanatory. Um, so let me save this uh, mod preset. Let's call it uh, DRO tutorial. I don't think anyone will even see this, uh, this preset unless you... Uh, I don't think I think I'm the only one who can see that when you save it, it saves as a different name. Anyways, I'll uh so I'll launch the game and I'll probably edit out getting the initial setup. Alright, so we're on Altus. So I'll be making it here. I'm gonna kind of just select an AO. I guess first things first, I'll save the mission in my uh 2024 folder. Call it uh, DRO tutorial. That'll what saving that does is create a uh, a folder in your documents that you could use to. You have to put a, a bunch of stuff in there for um, 
you know, mission file structure stuff. Anyway, to so start off, I mean, I'll kind of go over what I do for, for making a mission, kind of starting from scratch, you know. You might be able to skip around this if you uh, have seen my previous ones. You don't, you kind of know the, what's up with that. But um, uh, I'm going to, actually, I'm going to import loadouts. But I don't want to spend a ton of time making loadouts. But essentially what I have right now is, um, okay, so we'll make a, so first all, I'm going to, first thing I do is get the cover map module, which this allows you to um, set a, you can set a size by manually dragging it or I'll just do this. I'll make a uh, 3000 by 3000 square. Actually, you know, maybe I'll make a 5000 just to be a large side. Uh, and we'll maybe we'll make the AO. Maybe let's make it this southern uh, area here. Um, so cover map, basically what this says is when you're on the map, you'll see like the, the rest of the map will be grayed out. So this is kind of your your confined AO, essentially. Um, so next thing we'll place down, well, first thing you got to place down is a player. So I guess choosing what side you're going to play on, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with the AAF. Let's make this a, maybe a, uh, maybe like a AAF counterattack or something against NATO or something like that. Yeah. Let's, let's put down a, uh, squad leader down here at this air base down here. That'll be our player. Now I'm going to name this player persist one reason being so i don't really use it so much right now i have in the past and it's a good mod but remy uh, if you know the youtuber remy he's made a a mod called persist rco um it's a pretty good mod for persistent operations it basically allows you to save um your your progress on missions and stuff between missions so then you can import that data and set up the next session essentially with taking into account what's happened in the past. Um, now, the thing is, Drongo has its own um, mission persistence features. I haven't used them. I, I may in the future, but essentially when I'm using Persist, I you need to have a character named Persist1. That's what I always name my squad leader uh, role as, even if I'm not using Persist, just because all my scripts call that. So if you're using the scripts that I'm providing for Rally Point and stuff, you're going to need to call your main squad leader uh, Persist1. Obviously, you can scale this up. You know, you can make this your officer or whatever. You can you can adjust my scripts. Feel free to do that if you're adding more squad leader roles or whatever. But for now, squad leader one, persist one. And then the other, the only two other roles as far as my mission structure, and I'll go over that. Actually, you know, I won't, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make like three basic loadouts. I'll make this for like a four-player squad, maybe, um, just to show you how I do that. But you can skip past this. I'll, I should have timestamps for the... I'll try to put as many timestamps as I can as far as what's going on, so you can skip around to stuff you want. Um, so next thing we'll place down is a team leader, and of a second in command. We'll name him SL2. And what that does in terms of the scripts I have set up that we'll be adding, SL2 will be your second squad leader, your team leader, and if you're running one squad, uh, and they will have the ability to place down a rally point um, alongside the squad leader. So. That's essentially all that the team leader moniker does. And I'll make them a sergeant as well, which will play into Drongo's artillery stuff. Um, so ranks do matter when you're using what I use, which I'll, I'll go into that in the future. But you're going to want to have your, you know, your general squad leader, probably a lieutenant or sergeant, team leader, also a sergeant, uh, generally, just for, because certain uh, of Drongo's mods allows you to restrict things based on roles. So if you only want sergeants to be able to call in artillery, that's why I make the squad leader to the sergeant. So not, not all players have access to those features. Uh, next thing we'll do the other only named role. I've had other named roles in the past, but the other only other one will be combat lifesaver, and we will call that MD one. And I'll say why in the future. It's basically I have scripts set up to automatically spawn inventories, and MD one will spawn the medic inventory. I only have two types of inventories right now. I used to have more in the past, but right now we have base rifleman or base like soldier which the medic also gets, and then MD1, which will spawn medical supplies in the backpack. Basically, what that means is I don't have to manually set up um, any uh, any stuff in the in the units themselves other than their combat equipment, essentially. So uh, so with the way I actually will have like one more guy, I'll just, maybe just an auto rifleman. I'll make that playable as well. Uh, another, go over some quick features I'll make. Uh, what I'm going to do for squad leader, I'm going to take one, uh, squad leader at, uh, let's make it a Python or let's make it a Gorgon. 
So what this does, or maybe Gorgon one. So one squad leader that, that this is how the role appears in the role description page on, uh, the, the mission select screen. So this will, this, the way the reason why you type one colon squad leader is because that, that just makes it look less, uh, it looks like how it would be be by default, essentially. You want so if you're having like the second guy, if you want to change his role name, you're gonna so for example, I want my team leader to be called like JTAC, for example. I'm gonna call or at least, uh, I'll just I'll just do team leader, but yeah, team leader. That way, when you're on the mission select screen, actually, I can show you right now. Um, to LAN. Um, when you're on the mission select screen, once it loads in a second. As you can see, it looks just like it doesn't look like I've edited this at all, but I have. So I could I could rename these roles to whatever I want as long as I have the numbers there. Looks nice and clean, you know, it's optional. But uh, and then if you want to reorder like the the order that these are in, like squad leader, team leader, combat leader, all you would do is ungroup all the units and then group them one at a time in the order you want them to appear on this list. Um, same thing with if you want to adjust squad location. If you want one squad to be at the end, you're going to have to group that squad with the first one and then ungroup it, and then that squad will be at the end. Um, next thing we have is, uh, so Gorgon 1, that's the squad name. So when you put in, we're using, I think it's Ace, but it could, yeah, I, th I think it's just Ace that does this, maybe CBA. Uh, when you put at and then whatever, that's the squad name that will appear on your role select screen. But keep in mind that if you want it to appear in game, you're gonna have to go into the group and also rename this organ one. So that's kind of how the squad thing goes. Next thing we'll do, I'll, I'll actually edit the roles real quick. I know I said I wouldn't, but whatever. Um, generally, I'll just keep the combat roles the same, but when I'm setting up the, what I, what I wanna do with these scripts is I'm gonna go into uniform. I'm gonna press delete all. The way I set up my script right now is I have a default loadout set up for um, their uniform, which is where I keep all my basic medical supplies and a couple of grenades. So, and earplugs, stuff like that, stuff that I think is required for every soldier will all go in the uniform and the uniform will be completely filled up. So don't bother putting anything in the uniform. All your basic stuff with the script I'm using for Ace will be filled up already. And obviously you can edit this, these scripts I have once I go over them to include whatever equipment you want. If you're using vanilla instead of Ace, uh, you can obviously just have vanilla equipment and remove the ace stuff, but this is all set up for ace. Next up, I can set up the uh, the whatever gear I want. So basically combat gear generally, like magazines, grenades, uh, extra grenades, stuff like that will go in the uh, vest. And this is basically my squad. My squad leader is all set up. You'll automatically spawn with a radio if I want to add extra radios or whatever for acre. I mean, actually, I don't have radios. So I don't have acre installed on this, but, you know, um, actually, that may be a no, no, it should be. It shouldn't be a problem. I don't. I don't have Acre included in my gear scripts. Anyways, and then so I'll do the next uh, next couple of roles here. Team leader, same thing. Uh, empty the uniform. I'll keep the default uh, vest, which has a couple of magazines. You know, basic stuff. You, so you don't you don't have to do a whole lot of editing with this system. As long as your uniform's clear, you don't have to worry about adding medical supplies or at radios, whatever. It's all going to be set up automatically, and you can edit that. Now for the MD1, it's a little bit special, but um, medics always generally spawn with backpacks anyways, but we're gonna empty the backpack just to make sure it spawns everything that I need. And I'll go over what it adds on the gear script uh, screen once we do the file structure stuff. But essentially medic will automatically have all of his medical supplies, which I think are sufficient for a squad level squad leader in his backpack. And I'll remove the uniform because also he, he will have the same basic loadout for everything else. His vest, and also you can you can generally add the medic backpack uh, isn't excessive, so generally it won't completely fill up a backpack. So if you want to add a little extra magazines or whatever for him on a mission basis, you know that's up to you. Uh, he'll have room; he should have room for it. You can always spawn in and check. Uh, and then next up will be the auto elfman, which obviously same thing. Just all I need to do is empty the uh, uniform, and then his magazines and all of that stuff will apply. So that's basically how I would set up a squad's loadout. Uh, pretty simple, I think. I don't think I had the system in my last video. Um, and uh, just so you know, like the way I figured all these scripts and stuff, it's basically pure trial and error, messing around a little bit with ChatGPT, although you have to take that with a big grain of salt because ChatGPT will fuck up a lot. It can help with certain syntax and stuff though. So a little bit of a useful tool, but you know, you really have to check all your code and check tutorials and stuff, but basically I, I struggled my way through all this coding shit and I've managed to make something that at least somewhat works for me. So 
you have any questions, always feel free to leave a comment and I can uh, help out to what I can. But just keep in mind, I am not a good scripting. Uh, I'm not good at scripting. Um, uh, but anyways, yeah, so that's 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 our little team. Um, you know, why don't why don't I just get um, this? Uh, this I'll, I'll get all the in-game stuff apart from Drongo set up now, and then I can have a separate uh, thing for that. So the next thing I will spawn in is a composition that I have, which is called Startup Stuff V4. We're currently at V4. So I'm going to click that. Uh, and then actually I got an error because this startup stuff does include stuff that I don't have mods for, but anyways, it should be fine. So yeah, we basically have some basic, uh, basic ammo and stuff. This, this is our rally point RP one. Uh, so I, you, you are always going to name, if you're using my rally point system, you're going to name your rally point RP one. You can uh, edit the code. If you want to have multiple rally points, all that stuff, you, you're going to have to figure it out on your own, but there are ways to modify it pretty easily. Um, if you know generally what you're doing. Special states on this, I always have it, it enable damage false, so it can't get destroyed because that would be a problem. And then, um, yeah, so you can put whatever ammo, basic medical supplies you want within this crate, and this will be, you can call in the rally point and maybe do a little lights for resupplying, or if you don't want to have any resupply, you can always delete everything. Um, so what we have spawned here is, so I'll go over this stuff first. We have game master module with hashtag admin logged. I have had issues in the past with the Zeus module not initiating for whatever reason, and you just step back out and come back in multiplayer and it'll be started properly. I don't know why that is, but might be. I think I've had more success in the past. You can actually type in your Steam code. Your, there's like an ID code with your Steam profile. If you edit that, enter that into the owner module alongside admin logged on a separate one. So you have one for the admin and one for specifically you if you want to use Zeus. I think that works better, um, but admin log works for the most part sometimes you'll have it bug out hc1 headless client one if you're not using a headless client you don't need this but it doesn't really hurt to have um but if you're using a headless client just hc1 playable there's ways to enable headless client uh ai offloading but that's kind of a more advanced feature i probably won't go into that if you know what headless clients are you can probably figure it out on your own um uh next up we have actually okay actually this is uh Interesting. I don't think I saved the right startup stuff. Okay, so startup, uh, this rally point. First of all, this is the wrong name, so I'll have to edit this composition. Uh, I won't include the composition. If you want to get this composition, um, it's it's really not that complicated, but um, you, you can just kind of copy it from, you can make your own composition from this, this mission. I'll have it all grouped up together so you can kind of just copy it and make your own composition. Basically, I just plop it down and it sets it up for me. But we're going to uh, respawn. Make, call this respawn. Now, the reason why I call it respawn and not respawn west is apparently. Now, take this with a grain of salt because I haven't fully tested it yet. But if you just type respawn, it'll default to that if there's no respawn west or respawn east available. Meaning if you only have players on one side of the mission they'll respawn on this marker regardless of what side they're on. However, if you're doing a PvP mission or a mission with multiple sides and you want them to respawn not on the same place, you're going to have to make individual markers with individual res uh, rally point systems and all that. So, respawn marker. Uh, that's the rally point. And actually, I'm going to save this as a composition because I fucked up last time. Uh, save as composition, and we're going to call it startup stuff b 5 that's good. And then uh, let's go over the other stuff. So player base, this will be our, you can obviously change the names on the, uh, don't change the variable name if you're using my system, but you can change the text name and the color and the marker type and everything. So you can even make these invisible if you really wanted to. But uh, player, this will be just called player base. This is because this is where the rally point will spawn or will move back to if the rally point is overrun. That's why I call it player base. So it's it's uh, referenced in the uh, <clears throat> in the script. And we're just going to call it uh, AAF base. Just as an example, we're going to uh, make it independent. We're going to make all our markers independent. And so that's just looks nice. AAF base, rally point, respawn. Um, and then we're going to have radius trigger. So this is another system I have in place. Obviously highly configurable, or you can delete it if you want. But in my rally point script, I now have a this radius trigger. Um, 
And I've been told, you know, obviously, like if you're watching this and you know scripting, you're gonna be like pulling your hair out because like, oh, there's so many better ways to do this. This is shit that I, I generally know how to work with triggers pretty well. And there may be better ways to not use the trigger, but you know, this is what works for me. So if you want to figure out a way to do it without triggers, that's that's up to you. But I currently use this method. So we're gonna set trigger owner. We're gonna make that our persist one. Reason being, once uh, this is set to uh, owner only, not present, repeatable. Uh, on a timer what this means is after 130 seconds if the player is not within this radius which this this marker sh or this trigger should always be moved with the, the script to the location of the rally point meaning that if the player is not within this radius around the trigger obviously you can change that um for 120 seconds it will reset the rally point to the player's location so if they're if you're like fucking around you forgot about placing the rally point your way out here their respawn point is way back here which will be a huge pain in the ass um, after 120 seconds, it'll re automatically place it to there. Now I, I, I made the radius pretty short. You probably make this bigger and it would be fine. But if you don't want your players to complain about walking too much or having to pick up or whatever, you know, you could, you could even disable this feature entirely, but this is just, I find works for me often when you're squad leading, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Sometimes you'll figure out to place a rally point in which case, you know, it can cause problems. So this is kind of a backup system. So you can't really forget the rally point. Keep in mind that with the overrun system I have where enemies could be within a certain radius of the thing and it'll overrun and spawn the rally point back at base. You can kind of get into a loop where if they, uh, if the enemy constantly keeps overrunning while it's outside of your radius, like, you know, for example, you're out here, enemies are around you, rally point gets overrun, spawns back at base, 120 seconds later, it'll spawn back to you, get overrun, you know, that can happen, but it's not really a huge issue in my experience. Um, so that, that's good for the rally point. I think that's all my startup module stuff. Uh, and then, so what we're going to do, we're going to, okay, we're going to do everything except the file structure and Drongos first. So then next thing I would do, I'd go into general, I'd make the operation name. Let's call this, uh, AAF counter attack. Uh, in picture, we're going to do. Uh, I think I don't have a thing in the description EXT for this, so I'm going to type it here. I'm going to type uh, images loading.pa. That's a texture I have for the loading screen. It's just a default Arma 3 logo, but you're going to put that in all these. It's just a default Arma 3 logo. Um, and you can edit that PAA file. You can even put a JPEG in actually at the right dimensions and it'll work as long as you, um, you have it, uh, you know, set up with the right name and everything. Um, text will just do, uh, this will just be the text that shows on the screen, the, the uh, loading screen and stuff. Um, I just have the same text in every box, but let's say uh, AAF have to counter attack NATO forces on Altus. And there we go. And we're gonna copy that into these. And we're going to make Independent allegiance hostile to see friendly to CSAT and hostile to blue four as it is in the campaign. Uh, and then we're going to next up, we're going to go to environment. Obviously, you can make time of day everything. We're going to make this, I forget what time it takes place in our maybe August 2035. I forget exactly. Let's make it around midday. And for weather, we're not going to worry about weather because we're going to have a Drongo's weather module set up for that. Um, next up, we're going to go to multiplayer. So um, I think the respawn system, you can keep this, whatever. I'm pretty sure I have it set up. So where it should be working through the description EXT to set the respawn system, but we're going to type in our, uh, description here. We're going to disable AI. If you want to have AI in your squad, obviously you enable AI set gameplay mode, cooperative one to 12, maybe a one to four players. Cause that's what, it, what the mission is currently set up for. If you want to have respawn tickets. Um, uh, you can set respawn tickets here. Um, I don't think I will for this one, but you know, if you want to have respawn tickets, you can do that. Um, it's okay. Next thing, performance. If you want to have garbage collection, uh, I'm going to set it for minimum distance 25. So when it's 25 meters away, they, they'll start deleting objects. Um, as long as it's over the limit, you're going to delete all character corpses, going to set a timer for five minutes. So after five minutes, if it's over the limit of 20, it will delete corpses 20 for Rex as well. All scenario objects makes it five minutes as well. That's all the, I guess there's also, I have, um, I have add on options I can do, 
but I'm not going to do mess with those right now. You can set your own add on options. I think generally there's a lot of individual settings you can change like medical and stuff. Um, but essentially you're going to, you're going to tweak that kind of how you want. There's a lot of settings in here. You can, you can adjust to make things how you want them. I guess the only thing I would make sure is checked. If you're using, if you want the AI to use lambs artillery, it would be uh, either enable automatic artillery registration or you're going to have to manually set that on artillery pieces that you manually set down. So, you know, basically if artillery is on the map if, and this is checked, they will use it to call an artillery on you. So if you don't want that, you're not going to want to set this. But if you do want it for all artillery pieces, even the spawned ones that are not spawned at the mission start, you'll want to enable that. All right. So I think that's all of that. So, so we're going to move to the file structure. Save. And then I'll start a new recording real quick. All right, so we are, well, let me just check real quick. Just check something real quick. Uh, okay, yeah. so we are on the file structure. Uh, so we're going to go to that mission, which is DRO tutorial. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy paste what I have from my template file. So you don't need the, te you can have a template file that you, you know, put all your goodies in, but you're gonna have this tutorial, which you can, uh, you know, kind of adjust how you want. I'm gonna go to my, Where's my DRO? Okay, DRO tutorial. Copy paste all that stuff in. So this stuff should already be in your file. You shouldn't have to worry about it, but I'll go over each one just in case. Just you can skip this if you've seen my previous one, but this will delete the player's body when they respawn. So you can't go back and get extra ammo. This will enable the AI skill system, which is made by uh, George Floros. So you're gonna, if you're using the, the configurable AI settings, which I have them set up already, but if you want to change them, you can do that. Uh, any player local What this, okay. So this is the first change as far, I think, I don't think this was my last one. It may, may have been in my last one. I'll go over it anyways. Um, so what this does when the player, this runs on a local player. So, so on a player's computer, um, at the mission start, um, or I guess whenever, yeah, yeah. At the mission start, um, when they first join or whatever, um, they will get, so, so this, this right here, this whole chunk here, this will set up a respawn marker system. You can disable that or uh, not a respawn marker, a wounded marker system. This will set a marker, um, on the player's body, like a big red one, uh, and also one on the map, um, when they're unconscious. So this allows medics to see where, um, you know, their, their wounded players are and, um, Anyone can see wounded players. I've, I've tried to make it so only medics can see, but I couldn't really figure it out. But um, I use this generally. I, I made this mostly with chat GBT, and it works all right. It work, works works about as good as I want. I would have preferred to have some extra features on it, but it works works good enough. If you want to figure it out how to make it better, you can, and let me know. But um, so this is a re uh, an unconscious marker system. You can delete that if you don't want that. Next up is we have player uniform stuff. So... This chunk here, this is all that will spawn in. It'll run on the player, and if they are a player, which they are, you know, if you're you're playing the game, it'll spawn all this stuff into your uniform. Meaning, what we get here is we get uh, one to ten, so that's uh, ten uh, packing bandages, maybe eleven actually. I forget how exactly this works, but anyways, we'll get packing bandages. I don't use advanced bandages, so we only use one type of bandage, so it's fine. Um, As the no scene. Um, will also spawn in the uniform, which you don't actually need that at all. It's kind of useless if you're using the basic medical, but whatever. You'll also get a cable tie. You'll get earplugs. You'll get epi one epinephrine, one morphine, a flashlight for your map, map tools, a splint, a tourniquet, two smoke grenades, one hand grenade, and that's all that'll spawn in your uh, in your <clears throat> in your uniform. Next up is what the med spawns in the medic. So if the if the roll, so you can have two medics actually. So if the roll and you can. You can adjust this to be however many medics you want, if you really want to. If the role name is MD1 or the variable name of the unit is MD1 or MD2, it will spawn in 30 packing bandages, 12 morphine and epinephrine, six splints, uh, four, it might be five. I, this one to four thing, I don't, I, that might be one to four meaning like three or four or five. I forget exactly what that means. I think that means four, but don't, don't quote me on that. Um, and then you'll get, uh, four uh 
500 milliliter IVs of saline, which act as blood essentially. Um, so when you're low on blood or whatever, and then you will also get three, uh, 1000 milliliters of saline and one tourniquet and also a personality kit. So that's, that's what, if you're a medic, that's how it spawns. So that's how that works. Uh, you can obviously edit that to be whatever objects you want in, in it we have. So this is the current rally point system. Um, well, other than the, the actual file, but create diary record. Um, I'll keep this here, but let's make a basic loadout or a description. So my description here, let's defeat NATO. These are line breaks within the, uh, diary record. If you wanted to have multiple diary records, you can just copy this and rename the, uh, di the mission to, uh, whatever you want. Um, and then, so up here we have, it'll run the rally point system, which will add the actions to the players that, uh, will have uh, rally points or be able to place rally points rather next up, we have a repeating. And so I've had issues in the past in multiplayer, just so you know, with the rally point system, um, I may have fixed it may not have where when the the position of the respawn marker is moved um to the the player uh it i've had issues with it not updating on all players computers meaning that some people will even though the the respawn marker is in the right position it'll take a while for their computer to realize it is so they'll spawn in the old rally point position i've tried several ways to fix it include that's why some of my scripting stuff is a little messy in the rally point file right now but at the moment, I think I may have fixed it by using remote exec in this uh, repeating script. So every 15 seconds, what this will do is move the respawn marker named respawn to position ATL, which someone let me know that using get pause ATL is better than and set pause. Um, actually, wait, this should be. Uh, uh, yeah, set marker pause. Yeah, set marker pause and get using a get pause ATL. It will. A remote exec which executes on all servers at the same time it will set marker pause uh of the respawn marker to the position of rp1 meaning every 15 seconds the respawn marker will move to the box named rp1 that's how we should be getting our rally point system move or respawn marker move to the position of the rally point um every time at uh, the right that the right time i i haven't fully tested this i've only just recently fixed this so it may not be fully fixed, but at the worst case, you'll have issues where you'll need to make sure your rally points are set up in advance or people will spawn in the old ones, which can cause issues. If you have Zeus enabled, you know, you can always work around that, but something I'm a little working on right now, if I fully figure it out, I'll make a new video on my rally point, but this should be functioning at least somewhat may cause a little bit of issues. So just keep that in mind. If you want to fix it, you know, I've put up feelers trying to get people to help me with it, but I haven't had too much success with that. Anyways, so that's how the in, in the init uh, SQF, this runs on, by the way, on the entire server, including the server. So I think <clears throat> my, my, there might be issues with locality here. If you don't know what locality is, that's basically just the computer um, that the script is running on. So this, this will spawn on all computers in the server, I'm pretty sure, including the headless client and all that. Now, none of this stuff should matter that much, but Keep that in mind. Um, we're going to close in it. And then we have the gear script. So this is okay. I have some stuff here. Um, so this is the default uniform. This is the default medic backpack. Uh, this is this. Nothing, keep in mind this gear dot text doesn't do anything. It's, it's a text file. It's just for um, if I want to copy paste stuff, basically. Um, but yeah, if we have a default foolish arsenal, so this keep in mind this includes acre stuff. So this might break if you're not using acre, and actually it might include some other stuff as well. But regardless, um, this these are default arsenals. If you want to add them, I'll probably use this actually um, for an arsenal um, when I when I place down that in the the mission making segment. Anyways, that's what gear is. It just has all those same scripts just in one place, so you can edit it and move it around if you want. Um, then we have description EXT. This is where I've had some, oh wait, shit. I guess my, okay. You know what? I got to go to uh, my template. Isn't fully set up. I guess I kind of forgot this. If I go to OP Romeo, which is my latest one. Oh, wait, not OP, OP Quebec. GXT. Okay. Actually, I guess I didn't adjust my config. Okay. So what we're going to do here 
Um, we're going to delete this config sounds. If you want to set up uh, like radio and music and stuff, you can kind of figure that out on your own. But for now, we're going to keep it a little basic. So this is all that's required in here is respawn and start enable debug console allows you to use debug console and makes it so players will not respawn at the start of the mission, which is important. Um, class params. This is for the AI system. You don't mess with this. Although this basically just allows you to have different names for your uh, difficulty presets in the AI menu. Uh, so delete that. And we're actually going to have to go back into our mission. And because I, I thought this stuff would be set up automatically, but we're going to go in here. We're going to go to respawn and custom position. A spectator mission fail when everyone is. So we're not going to enable that. We're not going to enable that for this one in particular. Uh, and we're going to have a uh, short respawn counter. Uh, we're not going to have tickets, so I think this all should be good. Uh, yeah, so this 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 is what enables that respawn marker system. We're going to have a respawn delay of two minutes. So that's how I like. To, actually, we're gonna we're gonna be a little a little more casual with this. We're gonna have a thirty second respawn timer. I prefer two minutes just because I want to have there should be some consequence for death in a respawn system other than tickets. Um, so you know you're not you don't want to rush around getting killed all the time because you're gonna have to wait a little while at least to get into the action. But, uh, okay, so now we have, uh, so that's, that's what description EXT is, uh, or I didn't actually, did I do it right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good on this mission structure stuff. Yeah, so it should be good there. So next up we have, so in the sounds folder, this is some sound stuff I'm going to delete, but you can put sounds in here if you want. Oh, wait, shit, this is the wrong motherfucking, uh, folder. Okay, there we go. Good, I almost fucked that up. Um, so we're gonna go back to our, to our template or our, uh, test file. We're good. Yeah, we're good in here. All right now in sounds here, I'm going to delete this stuff. I'm going to go into scripts. We don't need the radio talk, um, thing. This is, uh, this should be in my other, uh, I'm not, I'm going to include this. Maybe I'll do a tutorial for making radios and stuff in the, uh, little, little side, uh, immersion details like that. I'll make another tutorial for that later if I feel like it, but we're gonna focus on the rally point system and stuff here. So we got the rally point thing here. So the stuff in here, I, I, for, I honestly forget if this was in my last, last rally point video, but we're gonna have some stuff we're gonna have to edit here. because So this, this is actually good because we'll have to edit this stuff every time you're changing factions and things. So going through here, um, trigger activation. So this is the, this right here, Rally point trigger. This is the overrun trigger. This is what will be triggered when there are enemies within 10 meters of the, the side here. Um, it will be considered overrun. So what we're going to change this to is West because we want NATO to overrun the trigger. So West, when West is present for 10 seconds um, within a 25 meter radius, that means that uh, it will be this, this script will run. So what happens here is we get a hint that says the rally point has been overrun. We will have RP1 set pause ATL get marker pause player base. So this means RP1 will be spawned or moved to the player base marker. RP RP trig, um, which is this trigger actually, this, this trigger will also be moved to player base. Radius trig will also be moved to player base, and this radius trig is that the one that's in game here which if you remember is synced to our squad leader. So meaning this will uh, start the timer of one minute, 30 seconds to automatically place the, the rally point so that, um, you know, players aren't always having to spawn at base. If the, uh, if the player forgets or uh, in an old rally point, if the player forgets to make a new rally point. So that's what this does. This basically just moves all that trigger stuff or all that rally point stuff to the base. That's all this trigger does when enemies are near. Next up, we have actually, uh, there's actually very little I have to um, adjust here because we're using that. The uh, So we don't have to change the respawn marker because all of that stuff is attached, the respawn marker is attached to RP1. So thinking here, I'm thinking I may have inadvertently made this a lot more efficient. Yeah, I think the only thing you'll have to adjust in here is literally what faction overruns the trigger. Um, you could actually have two triggers um, if you if you're fighting two factions, for example, if you're fighting um, east or if you're fighting like op four and blue four or op four and green four, 
um, you could have another, you could just copy paste this and uh, set the other, set it to, um, you know, you have to rename, you have to rename some of this stuff. Um, keep in mind, but um, yeah, so you, you'd be able to um, adjust uh, what facts. So all you have to do when you make a new mission, as long as this, this right here is set to what the enemy, uh, what the enemy faction is, you're good to go. And everything else should automatically be set as long as the, the rally points are named RP1, as long as the radius trig is named radius trig, as long as the players are named persist one and R and SL two. Um, so yeah, um, I think this is, it's actually, I've actually simplified it a little bit. So I'm gonna pat myself on the back for that. Uh, so we're going to save this because we did change that. Um, next up is images. This is the loading PA. This is the loading screen and AI skill, which is where you will adjust your AI settings. I think in my last tutorial, I'll kind of go over that, but, uh, I'm going to keep, just assume you're going to use my default AI settings, which are, I find work pretty well in terms of difficulty, but, uh, I'm going to move on to moving, going over the, the map module stuff, um, which will be the Drongo's map population stuff. So I'll go over that in the next little segment. All right, we are on the next segment. So we're going to get the, so first thing, <clears throat> first thing we're, first things first. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's set down our, uh, our, what do you call it? Set down an arsenal. We're going to get a cargo net, AF cargo net. Going to place that down. We're going to empty it because we don't want to have them having any OP gear. I don't want them to have. So we're going to set up a basic arsenal. We're going to go to our gear here, and we're going to set a let's do let's do a full-ish arsenal. I may have to delete if this gives me an error. And it okay, actually, you know, this is annoying because I forget. Easier to copy a giant string like this by just clicking, scrolling to the right. And by the way, I'm using Notepad Plus, which is a, basically a requirement. It's very has a lot of useful features. I'm gonna copy this and put this in here. And what this does is adds a an Ace Arsenal to uh, which the Ace Arsenal, by the way, is way better than Vanilla Arsenal. Always use an Ace Arsenal, in my opinion. It's it's basically amazing compared to the Vanilla one. Um, anyway, so this will spawn in all of that stuff in this list to the arsenal, meaning that you could have a, a limited arsenal. So you don't have all the OP gear and all the guns and stuff. You, all you have is your base equipment. And then if you wanted to edit, add in uh, like guns and stuff, all you need to do is copy the, uh, um, copy the, what do you call it? The, uh, like in here, you just copy the, the, the class names in the arsenal, which, you know, you do that by, for example, if I want to just add in the rifle, copy this click it copy in the ace arsenal by the way which uh you should be using oh wait i forgot fuck oh wait no no never mind sometimes it, it glitches out when you double click and it doesn't actually select the right object anyways we're gonna that there and there that'll spawn in that rifle into the limited arsenal there's another way to do this which is to spawn every piece of equipment that a player has on them in the playable um as a playable character and I'll, I'll show that. And actually I will include that script. I'll show that. I'll show that now actually. So I don't forget. So we're going to just real quick test the mission. Actually, we'll also see if we need to edit the uh, arsenal at all. We're just going to start up here. As you can see our mission loading screen and stuff. We have that, that ignore that error. That just means that there's no player called SL2 doesn't actually affect anything as far as the rally point goes. Um, but uh, yeah, Next up, we have so Arsenal. Yeah, we have all this, uh, all the basic equipment that we wanted included in the Arsenal. That's good. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go to, so I have this set up here. So we're going to global exec, and we're going to copy this, we're going to global exec this, and actually we're going to go into our gear. And this will create a an array right there, which has all of the equipment that was on a playable unit when the game was loaded. So that'll have my helmet, my all that equipment. So you can delete stuff. You don't, if you don't want to have night vision, you know, you can delete the night vision, but that's just an easy way to get all of your, uh, 
all of the gear you want. Um, and then this array could just be copied in the place of this on the uh, Ace Arsenal script. I will copy that code, which by the way, I've, I got this from Remy, one of Remy's tutorial videos on mission making at some point. So that's, I don't know who exactly made this script, but it's insanely useful. So I'll just put that down here and I'll call this, uh, um, play a playable unit gear grabber script. All right. And we will save that. So that should be included with the mission file below. Um, so we're going to close that. So that's, that's, that's how I would get the, uh, the more, more stuff included in the, uh, the, the arsenal. Um, so next up, uh, let's go back. Let's now we can start. Uh, so we have the arsenal, uh, we can add vehicles and stuff, obviously. Um, maybe we'll just do that now just for some basic shit. Um, I'll do some, some, uh, Phoenix, which are, that's the ACE name for them. Uh, I think they're called striders in the middle game. Anyways, that's just some vehicles we can use. Anyways, that's the basic shit. So what we're going to do is we're going to spawn in a marker or rather a module in Drongo's map population called core. And uh, this is configurable. So we're going to set this to debug mode true for now. You're going to have to disable debug mode when you actually want to play the mission so you don't see everything on the map. We're going to set this to what's the radius of the cover map. 5,000. So we're going to set this to this. This kind of helps you visualize where the playable area is, but we're going to set this to four. I'm going to set this to 5,000 AO radius. We're going to make it a square. So it's also this square around. So basically this entire cover map module is where the, um, where the Drongo's uh, map population is going to be. Uh, we can, we can adjust all kinds of stuff in this list. Um, but, uh, we're gonna we're gonna next next thing just to, to make it clear we're gonna set up a uh, if you wanna so there's all uh, basically you can see there's a huge fucking list of modules here there's there's all kinds there's actually um there's good documentation in the actual mod folder if you go to that it'll explain pretty much everything about every module so if you have any questions go in there I'll just show you what I do essentially we're gonna get a blacklist so we can have faction aos so if I wanted to have one faction be in only one area. That's how you would do that. Um, but right now we're going to to get the blacklist module, which is somewhere around here. Actually, just search blacklist. And mind you, there's multiple blacklists for multiple modules, so make sure you're placing the right one. Go to map population. We're going to set a blacklist marker. We're going to have the radius of that marker be probably, I don't know, let's make it 2000 and if we really wanted to measure that we could the measure tool and I want it to be a good distance away so that's 3000 so two th it would be around here around this radius that's there would be no anything spawning um AI or a civilian space spawn but I, I don't think I think nothing will spawn around that blacklist marker so keep that in mind I don't know if there's a way to blacklist act like specific factions or anything but i think if you want to have a faction be in only a couple areas you would use that faction ao thing but for my purposes i'm generally not going to do that so uh we're going to go to map population next thing to do and this is it's so simple to set this shit up that i'll just i can probably do this in like less time than the rest of the video so we're going to set up a this marker think it on the airfield it doesn't really matter where going to call this faction nato this will be the enemy faction you can add you can name it whatever you want this name is important for certain functions with certain uh modules in terms of calling that faction name but we're going to just call it nato because that's just the name of the faction um now this is adjusting how they are spawned on the map essentially there's several ways to do this but i'll show you one way i'm doing it you can adjust this to how you want now all these ones here below the occupied town ones, this stuff will be anywhere on the map, essentially, I'm pretty sure. So for example, squad size three, nine, it'll spawn. And if just so you know, the comma separating these, that's the one will be the minimum, the three will be the maximum, but you can change these numbers to whatever you want. So if you, the squad size for these groups that are spawned on this enemy side will be between three and nine soldiers, group, vehicle group size, I generally keep this down to one, just so it's not as OP as you would think. Um, so that vehicle group size will always be only one for me. 
Now patrols, it tells you exactly what these patrols do, but patrols are around towns. And if you have this set to patrols, it'll be around any town in the game. So that's, that's regardless of if the town is considered an occupied town quote. So, um, depending on how you're setting up your missions, you may only want to have soldiers in towns you specify. So I would set, for example, if I'm uh, for the sake of this mission, maybe we'll set patrols to zero. We'll set deep patrols, which so deep patrols are in remote areas. So the way I generally set up is I will have occupied towns where there's going to be a lot of enemies and I'll have deep patrols doing patrol and vehicle patrols doing patrols around random areas. So you're going to be encountering most enemies the in either in the wilderness or specific towns, which I consider occupied. And there's a function for that. So we're going to do, let's have um, four to between four and eight deep patrols. And mind you, these squads will be completely randomized. Um, so vehicle patrols we will have, let's have between one and two vehicle patrols or let's between two and three vehicle patrols roadblocks. Roadblocks aren't that of an advanced of a feature. Essentially it's just a vehicle spawned on the road with enemies in it. So don't expect like a compound or a, a composition or anything. There's generally this, this drawn goes bad population. It doesn't spawn compositions for stuff, uh, which take it or leave it. That's however you want. I feel like drawn goes bad population. It's, it's generally designed for populating, populating a map quickly. The specifics of like objectives you want to do. And um, like, if you want to have a, a base set up, you're going to have to do all that kind of by your, by yourself. And you keep in mind, all of this is compatible with placing down groups manually. If you want to have an objective be exactly how you want and then have the rest of the map be randomized. You can totally do that. It's very customizable in that way um, versus mods like alive where that might not function so great. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have roadblocks. We'll have one to three. That's fine. Um, garrison. So these are garrisoned. Um, uh, in buildings you, squads. So we're going to have zero because the reason being, we want garrison squads to only be in occupied towns. We don't want to just have like a random town in the middle of nowhere, have a full squad of guys for no reason camps. So these are like camps with a crate and some tents and a fire, um, more of a gorilla kind of thing. So we're going to have zero on those for this particular mission. Helicopters. Let's have a possibility of having, so between zero and one, it's a possibility. There's zero possibility. There's one. It's kind of a 50% chance, I guess is how I would see it. I could probably adjust this to 0.5 and it would be even less of a chance, but don't quote me on that. It might not, might not be the case. Um, we're gonna have zero planes. Don't have any planes here. We're gonna have zero to two drones. That's good. Compounds. Compounds are essentially groups of buildings um, where it will spawn one HVT in it, as well as a couple of squads to patrol and garrison that. So it's kind of like in an insurgent style, um, battle you know it's where like there would be like an insurgent compound with an hvt in it not really a conventional kind of thing so i'm going to remove that um hunters i'm not sure exactly how hunters work i'm sure that's explained in the drongos um you know the description but i think they're just units that will hunt players or something anyways um occupied town so this is where you would want your occupied town settings you would have a random amount of occupied towns which is it'll select towns randomly on the map to consider them occupied towns. I'm going to manually place all my occupied towns on this particular mission. And by the way, towns, the way it caches them, you can actually, or the way it decides what a town is, you can actually see it on the map. When you play with debug on, it'll, it'll put a little town marker next to where a town is. So if you, if you're wondering where towns are on the map, that's where, how you'll figure it out. But okay, we're going to have in every town, there'll be between two and four patrols patrolling around the town. Um, and there will be between one and three buildings garrisoned. I will also have, actually, we're not going to, I don't generally like to put vehicles in towns. Reason being is because, um, the vehicles, when they spawn in towns, they kind of act like roadblocks and it can just kind of, it's, it's, I wish they patrolled around the towns. I don't think they do. Um, so you can check that yourself, but I, I generally, I don't t have town vehicles. I prefer my vehicles when they're placed randomly to be vehicle patrols or roadblocks placed around the map. So they're a little more dynamic and not just like a APC sitting in the town in a static position. Anyways, that's how I do it. Uh, and then we have occupied town static. So that's obviously static launchers and stuff. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to set the statics here. We're going to put that to zero. We don't want statics around the map randomly. We're going to have between 
zero and two static launchers or whatever you want. And I'll go into how we set that. We're also, we're going to, in vehicles, we're going to have a, a 25% chance of passengers, or actually let's make that a 50% chance of passengers and passenger count four nine. So that'll, that's 50% chance that there will be passengers spawning, um, in vehicles, uh, for trucks and stuff. So the way we configure this faction here, pretty simple. Um, we're going to place, so we want it to be NATO. We're going to place down a NATO rifle squad. There's a radius around this. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Might be a hundred meters, something like that. Um, by the way, all these units will be deleted on mission start once it decides what's in a faction. Um, so, so we have a squad here. Now, the way it decides what is a squad leader, it's, or what roles people are, it's based on rank sergeants. I don't think corporals or privates mean anything, but sergeants will be squad leaders. So if you want a specific class to be squad leaders, you will, you know, place a uh, sergeant class unit. That will be what is the game considers a, a, what a unit that will command a squad. You also have multiple squad leader types. Um, by the way, if you want to have like specific types of units um, other than like one faction. So, for example, if I wanted to have a special forces squad and a um, regular infantry squad. I'm pretty sure the only way to do that is to set up an actual, um, uh, a side, like another faction entirely, because it'll spawn everything from this pool. Meaning if you have special forces, force soldiers in this, uh, around this marker, it'll sprinkle them into every squad. It won't just be like one squad of special forces and one squad of ir regular infantry. It'll all be mixed together. So you're gonna have to have a separate faction for that. Um, Another little annoying thing, in my opinion, which I wish the mod did, did which um, other mods can can handle, is um, there's no. It's all based on class names, meaning whatever you place down in the the um, in the uh, editor, their default loadout. That's what the unit will spawn with. You can't edit these loadouts and have custom factions or custom uh, loadouts for your enemies, which is a bit of a bummer. But I mean, I guess that's just how it works. So. You know, no, no way to get around that, really. If you want to have custom units with custom loadouts, you're going to have to manually place them on the map. And, um, you know, for example, if you want, like, a colonel guy to look a specific way. Otherwise, it's going to be relying on class names, basically default loadouts. Uh, next up, so let's have some vehicles. Uh, actually, let's set a drone down. So we're going to have an AR-2 darter. So that'll be the drone class. By the way, you won't really notice it on this on this mission, but if you ever forget a class a, or a, a role that is being spawned, so, for example, if you don't have a drone down, um, in this defined faction uh, module and the map populator calls for a drone, it will default to a NATO drone. So keep that in mind. If you're seeing like NATO units, it's because you don't have a properly placed um, uh, unit. Um, uh, anyway, so now we'll have some vehicles. So let's have um, maybe some Matt VH uh, HMGs, by the way, if you want to have one unit be more plentiful, the way you do that is you have multiple of them. So if I want it to be, so right now, all of these guys will be spawning equally apart from the squad leader, which will always spawn. So if I want to have, for example, if I want to have more riflemen in my squad, then like if, if you're, if you're on the map and like, you're seeing like, Oh, like a squad is populated fully with auto riflemen. That's just an RNG chance. If you want to increase the chances of riflemen spawning. For example, you just copy paste. Now there's a three times more chance that, um, a rifleman will spawn or, you know, percent wise, I don't know how it works out, but basically it's more likely that rifleman will spawn when you have multiple riflemen here, meaning you won't have as many like specialist roles, which if you have, for example, you want to have AT be less populous that you would just make everyone more populous except AT, in which case it would be a lower chance of spawning the AT. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so we have that we're going to spawn a, a truck here. We're going to have two trucks, so it's more likely that they will the trucks will spawn than HMG these. And, and actually, we'll have two of these. We'll have three of the or four of these, and we'll have one um, Badger APC. So the lowest chance of a Badger spawning, but they will spawn. So they're just kind of more rare than the other vehicles. Um, and then we're going to have the next roll, which will be, uh, just so you know, we're going to have... Uh, helicopter pilot be our helicopter. You can't really have crew, I don't think, but helicopter pilot will be the crew, essentially, I think. Um, so if if they, they are set to major, they'll be considered a helicopter pilot and will spawn being uh, a uh, 
helicopter uh, pilot or a pilot in general planes as well. I'm pretty sure. Um, next we'll spawn a crewman. And actually we need to, yeah, as any, any units in here will spawn. So if you're seeing crewmen when you don't want them to be delete all the crewmen in this radius, except for the one that you mark as captain. And when they're marked captain, they're considered vehicle crewmen for the purposes of spawning. Um, so yeah, that's how you would get a crewman. Next thing would be the, the final one would be the, um, the HVT, which would be, you set them as Colonel, uh, actually I'm, I'm thinking Lieutenant might be a role as well. I'm not sure exactly what a Lieutenant would be, but for now I won't worry about it. If you're wondering about that, check the documentation in the Drongos thing. And then I guess next up we would want helicopters. So we want to have the chances of the kind of helicopters that would spawn. Let's have a. Uh, Double the chance of these, and there's a lower chance of a Comanche spawning. So that's how uh, that works. Also, we're going to have to have the statics. Let's have a chance of AT, um, chance of a mortar, a higher chance of AT. We're going to have 50 cals. Um, I think it's 50 cal. Maybe a grenade launcher, actually. As a 50 cal, so we're gonna have a higher chance of 50 cals than all this other stuff, and then there's a lower chance a mortar will spawn, in which case they will provide artillery support. If I have that lambs uh, AI enabled, actually, can I enable it on this? I'll enable it on this. I don't. I don't think this will apply though. I think it'll be the default setting. So you'll have to enable that lambs AI if you want this mission to have uh, AI. Actually, I go to add on options, enable artillery. There we go. So that'll. That's how you would want. Uh, that's how you would get the artillery to uh, designate automatically for AI. Uh, okay, so that's a faction setup, and essentially that's almost all you need for a mission or a basic uh, map population. What we're gonna get here is for those occupied towns. You go to pop or occupied town, and faction name for the the t the faction that will be occupying said town will be NATO. Obviously, we're gonna have them occupy Pyrgos. Chalkea, um, and Dorita, and that, that's it. We'll have three big occupied towns. Maybe we'll have to clear them. We'll go into that in a sec. Um, so all kinds of modules you can set. All kinds of crazy shit. Uh, there's caching. If you want to put down this caching module, there's settings for it. I won't put it on this, but if you're having performance issues, caching essentially will only have squad leaders simulated on the map. The rest will be um cached so they'll use less processing power basically um we're gonna set down uh let's set, set up our our mission system i guess so it has a pretty robust mission generator system as well as uh manual tasks and stuff so we're gonna place this down the enemy side will be west friendly side will be resistance which is green four um, wait for faction. Yes, we won't want to generate missions until um, the faction is spawned. We're going to have between three and five missions spawned. The mission will end when it's completed. That's good. Uh, chain generated missions. That's just for um, we want them to appear one after the other rather than all at once. Fire exfiltration false. All this stuff is good. I generally turn notifications off just because it's a little annoying if the marker name is updating. End if all down. I'm going to disable it for this, but this would be how you would have it end when uh, players die or incapacitated. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for this, except for so for those randomly generated missions, which the game does do, or the module does do. Um, we're going to go into mission types, and this is an easier way to basically set missions. Um, so if you don't want to have any recon missions, aerial recon missions... We don't want to have seed missions. We don't want to have rescue missions. We don't want to have interdict. We don't want to have demo. We don't want to have destroy ships. We don't want to have destroy aircraft. Maybe maybe a chance of destroy aircraft if there's a helicopter or whatever. Um, no deliver, no clear mines, no find cash, no me leader, no detain. So basically these are the only, only combat missions. They're pretty basic missions. Keep in mind, there's nothing too fancy here. So you're going to have to get creative in terms of your own mission objectives. But for essentially a... a randomly generated spawn on the map kill enemies mission this is good enough clear is obviously for objectives 
uh, like clearing an area, destroy vehicles, specific vehicle, squad a specific squad, and kill a specific unit. So that's how that works. Destroy aircraft, obviously, is destroy an aircraft. Um, so we've got our mission types there, so they'll only spawn those missions. By the way, if you wanted to have, for example, if I want to have uh, clear missions more be more likely, I'll set that to two. They'll be more likely to spawn than the other mission types. Um, <clears throat> voice is getting a little hoarse now, but we'll power through. Um, so that that'll spawn our all of our all the stuff we want essentially. Um, all those missions and everything. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. There's a few other things I want to do. This is this is essentially all you need for a mission, and you can see how easy that was to set up. There's civilians. Civilians work in a similar way. Any when you place a civilian, or most most of these honestly work in a similar way. If if it's spawning something, for example, abandoned vehicles module, once that's down, it'll take the radius around that module as what it will spawn. So abandoned vehicles. If you want specific abandoned vehicles, you'll place those around the abandoned vehicles marker, and it'll spawn only those vehicles. So same thing with civilians. Same thing with a lot of stuff in the pop uh uh <clears throat> with the pop signifier at the start um okay so there's all oh, there's all kinds of crazy shit in this there's suicide bombers there's special ai there's qrf which you know a uh ai squads that will go out and deal with players who are spotted and stuff or enemies who are spotted you can have um there's ai interaction there's like a light uh not super advanced, but it's it's good enough. Like an insurgency type way you can play this with uh, like asking civilians and stuff. There's all kinds of advanced stuff you can do with this. I'm kind of keeping it basic for this, but really once you get, dig into this mod, there's all kinds of really cool features. Um, we'll go over the other stuff for the other Drongo stuff, because that's basically all I have to say as far as Drongo's map population. Obviously, there's a lot of advanced stuff you can do with it. You'll probably find tutorials and stuff. Um, spooks and anomalies. I'm not going to use it for this mission, but this is just uh, some cool stuff you can do with monsters and stuff dynamic weather we'll place the dynamic weather and this is a similar way to the other one i like to set these settings as force change at start we're going to set update cycle to we're going to have it be a longer update cycle 1600 seconds that's probably good enough there's going to be a 50 percent chance the weather will change and it'll take 60 seconds for the weather to change so it's not so instant wind power all that you can set the likelihood so if i want it to be more likely to be sunny i'll set it to three or whatever It'll be a, a multiplication of all the other stuff in terms of how much more likely it will be. <clears throat> um, so it'll, it'll be more likely to be sunny, essentially. So that works. Now for defensive AI, uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. It's all all of Drongo. Dr the good thing about Drongo, all of his mods have like a readme file in that mod itself that you can look up and see like everything you want to know about what's in the mod, how to use it. Essentially, he has great documentation. Uh, Drongo's honestly might be the best mod maker for armor right now. And, and a lot, I think he makes mods for a lot of other games too. Um, so yeah, Drongo's, Drongo's great. Uh, artillery. So just Drongo's artillery. <clears throat> so for, for example, actually what we'll do here, we're going to sit down an artillery unit for our AAF guys to use. Um, let's make it, uh, let's just make it a mortar. Um, Making a mortar. Um, I'm not sure mortar rate range, but I might mean need to make an artillery gun. It might not be far enough range away, but anyways, we're just making a mortar, and uh, what we're gonna have here is restrict users. You can you can sync uh, a unit to this, and which case it'll use the class name for who is allowed to use it. But right now we're gonna set it to sergeant, meaning the team leader who is a sergeant and the squad leader who's a lieutenant. And both use the artillery system, but no other players can. So kind of restricts who can use the artillery system. Air operations. Uh, we don't have any aircraft on the AAF side, but it's the same kind of thing if you wanted to restrict who can use it. Um, and then for AI fire support, we're going to place this down. We want the AI to use fire support. Uh, the side that will call support, we're going to make that west. That's good. Uh, all these settings, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, but we're going to make a minimum sergeant rank who can call in support. Uh, air units, blah, blah, blah. We're going to use artillery false because we're using Lamb's AI for the artillery. So if a, if a mortar spawns, the AI will use that uh, that that artillery system. Um, but uh, using Lamb's AI, that is, which has a 
The reason why I use Lamb's artillery is because it has a good like zeroing system. They won't just call it in right on you. It takes some time. Not sure how Drongos works. I imagine it's a pretty good system, but I just don't use it and I prefer Lamb. So you can enable this if you're not using Lamb's AI artillery. We're going to have use cast to true. So if a helicopter spawns, the AI will be able to call it in as support as long as they're within the radius. Um, and that's honestly, I think that's it. I mean, I could go in just to make sure everything's working. Uh, oh, one thing to keep in mind, if you're playing single player and you're using that rally point system, uh, you're going to need to have an AI unit near you to use it. Otherwise, you're going to have to adjust the script. Um, actually, I could, I could probably show you right now. Go to that rally point system. Um, right now, it has a signifier. So right here. If count allies nearby greater than one, meaning it has to have uh, nearby entities, which is man. Um, so actually, the the funny thing is this: I I I may have fucked up somewhere with the script. It'll it'll count any man, so civilians, uh, enemies, whatever. If there's a man within fifty meters, you can place this uh, this rally point. The the good thing is that it doesn't matter that much because if you can place it with an enemies nearby, it'll it'll be overrun in 10 seconds anyways. So not a huge deal anyway. So as long as there's a guy within a radius around you, you'll be able to call the rally point. If you want to disable that, you would set this to zero. Um, so as long as there's an, a man near you, you can place the rally point. So keep that in mind. We're going to start the mission. We're going to see that the generation works. Um, we'll actually see the debug as well, which you can uh, disable, but yeah, we're we'll kind of just start it just to show that all works just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Got the mission. I got the, our, our briefing. And so obviously I don't see anything on the map because nothing spawned in yet. So it'll spawn it all at the start. And if we go to our map, we can see the blacklist radius is working. We have NATO spawning in their occupied towns. We have vehicle patrols. We have roadblocks spawning. That's a lot of roadblocks, actually. I guess it just spawned them all. It's only three roadblocks, but it spawned them in close proximity to each other. So as you can see, we have vehicle patrols patrolling around, spawning our missions now. We have garrisons and patrols within the town. I'll have to clear that out. And um, so right now we have a clear objective marker here, meaning in a radius around this marker, we'll have to clear out all enemies meaning you'll have to go house to house, make sure area is clear. Uh, we have long patrols in random areas. So, you know, if you're just going through the wilderness, chance you'll run into a squad. Makes it a little more dynamic. We have one helo on the map. Actually, we have an objective to destroy that helo. So I don't actually have any AA weapons, so I'd have to get creative for that in this case. But uh, as you can see, it's spawning, spawning patrols and all that. And you, I mean, you could probably just see, I mean, this, this is, it took 30 minutes to get through this, this specific segment and the whole video will probably be like around an hour. Maybe hopefully you could skip it through it and hopefully it's not too, uh, too crazy. I might, I might edit, edit it down a little bit, but anyways, um, you can see how easy it is to set this up, how powerful it is. It's, it's a, a great mod, like my favorite mod at the moment for mission making. I still use alive. I still use. I use uh, NR6, HAL NR6 as well. If you know what that is, I might make a video on that. But for for quick mission making and, and just for all kinds of stuff, I think Drongo's map population is really the king right now. Um, I think it's still somewhat being supported. Maybe not not fully, um, but it but it works. It works pretty damn well. Um, uh, yeah, so... Um, I mean, let's, let's open our Zeus here. I mean, we have a uh, go around, just look around. Yeah, our our units be popular. This is what a roadblock looks like. Um, we just got a truck block on the road. Uh, we got a patrol patrolling, a vehicle patrol going by. Yeah, so basically, and then obviously you can play this in single player. And if you have debug off, you won't have any idea where any enemies are. Fully dynamic mission. And I know there are actual quick mission setups uh, you can do. Like, you know, you can select the faction, like, you know, dynamic recon ops, all that. But I think this is if for the people who like to tinker more, who like to set up their own custom storylines, their own custom objectives, things like that. This is kind of the option I would go with if I were playing single player or with a small group of friends. 
uh, just because you can you can really tweak it to exactly what you want while also having a wide variety of uh, randomization. Um, and as you can see, riflemen are generally more common in these squads. Generally, I could probably up it more, but uh, you generally see more riflemen in these squads. Um, is that even true? Did I? Did I? Did I? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're generally seeing more riflemen. We're getting some RNG where riflemen aren't spawning, but I only spawned like two more riflemen. But they are definitely more popular than other uh, units. So if you wanted to have a ton of riflemen, you just copy paste them a lot more. Um, and you know we have vehicles patrolling around. Um, and I may need to double check that just to make sure I I am right about that. The fact that you copy if you have more units, it'll be a higher likelihood of them. But I think that is the case. I mean, it would seem silly if there was no way to adjust how many units are spawning of each uh, type. But there we have a, a truck with some guys in it. So yeah, there's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do. Um, hopefully you got through the whole video or it was helpful to you or even just entertaining if you just want to listen to me uh, make a mission or whatever. But um, yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff you can do. Um, and yeah. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you have a good one. See ya.